Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start having discussions about 2023 and the upcoming contracts that the Cowboys are going to have to look at giving out to several of their players. I understand that when you look at it compared to other types of free agency classes, there isn't really a handful of guys that you had to be like, I need to bring this guy back. It's really maybe like one or two guys. We're going to go over that today. We're going to go over which free agents are up and really what the Cowboys can do here, what kind of cap space they're working with, and also who's extension eligible in 2023. So you probably already see that on the board. Now before we dive into all that, if you could, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you want to support the channel even further, hit the join button, become a channel member today. So today, as you can see here, here's all the 2023 free agents for the Dallas Cowboys, okay? You have... Nine offensive players, three special team players, and then you have nine defensive players, okay? Now, some of them already have projected market value. Others, I'm going to just be going off of what they got paid in 2022, and realistically, there isn't really a big market for these guys, so it could be whatever happens, happens. Then on top of that, you have two guys that are extension eligible, and that is CeeDee Lamb and Trevon Diggs that bring up anything of note. Anybody from the 2020 draft class are eligible to now get extensions, okay? And so the Cowboys have $8.6 million to work with off the bat, but of course you will see that money move up and they will make moves to get more. So don't worry, that's not going to stay stagnant. And also, I don't believe this, uh, you know, factors into what the salary cap's going to be in 2023 and beyond. So just keep that in mind as well. So to start things off, we'll go with the offense, we'll go to defense, and then we'll finish with special teams because I think it's, you know, relatively easy. So starting off with the offense, Dalton Schultz, you franchise tagged him. Right now, his market value is looking at about $15.1 million. They're projecting he's going to sign a four-year deal worth $60 million, and so... You think about that, do you want to bring back Dalton Schultz? I honestly don't think you need to bring back Dalton Schultz, if I'm being completely honest with you. I think with the additions of Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot, it makes him relatively expendable. So don't worry, I think that you can forego that and you get your comp pick from there. Next, you move on to the wide receivers in Noah Brown and James Washington, and things start to become really interesting because of the fact that the Dallas Cowboys don't really have a wide receiver three. Technically, it's Noah Brown right now, but James Washington is yet to play. Jalen Tolbert is behind on his development. So those are factors that are going to play into who the Cowboys decide to bring back, right? If it were up to me, I think that the Cowboys should prioritize trying to bring back Noah Brown. I think that you give him like a one-year, three to $5 million deal. Maybe you put some guarantees in there, unless someone else is going to throw the bag at Noah Brown, which, to be honest with you, his value has depreciated. And honestly, you know, other than the Cooper Rush, you know, stance of him being his guy, I mean, Noah Brown's had a couple things here and there, but I'm not saying he's bad, it's just he's not had a whole lot of opportunities, mainly because CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup has started getting into a rhythm. James Washington's been pretty much useless, you can let him go. Honestly, he was just a stopgap, in my opinion, for a guy like Jalen Tolbert. Moving on to the running backs. Tony Pollard is an interesting case, because right now, they got his projected market value at $7.8 million, which is a bit low for what I'm thinking. I'm looking at around $10 plus million. If you can get him on that kind of contract, that's a bargain. I think the Cowboys should look at doing that, a three- to four-year deal. But what's going to make things tough is, is that the Cowboys need to decide what they're going to do with Ezekiel Elliott, right? With Zeke, you're going to need to most likely have him restructure his deal. Not necessarily the Cowboys doing that, but ask him for, you know, hey, can you take a pay cut? If not, you're probably going to have to let him go. And that's the unfortunate part of this business, ladies and gentlemen. That's just where it's at, right? Uh, Rico Dowdle, I think Malik Davis has comfortably taken his spot. And, you know, it sucks to suck, but Rico Dowdle, hurt guys are staying hurt. And that's just really the end of it there. Next, you're moving on to your offensive lineman here to round out your offensive free agents. You have Connor McGovern, Terrence Steele, and Jason Peters. Now, for Terrence Steele, he is a restricted free agent, okay? Now, the reason why that's really important is because he can't just, you know, sign any deal. Now, the Cowboys can place a tender on him and all this other stuff, and then they can, you know, an arrange an extension, which most likely he will be here for a long time because the Dallas Cowboys, especially the coaching staff, love him. 
So I think that you most likely will see Terrence Steele get an extension sometime in 2023 as well, uh, you know, or 2024, depending on how fast the Cowboys want to work. I think that you should have maybe tried to sign him early. I, I don't think that you can negotiate with him because he is a part of that uh, 2022, or excuse me, 2020 draft class that becomes uh, extension eligible, eligible in 2023. I don't really know how the Cowboys will proceed there, but he's definitely one guy that I want the Cowboys to bring back, and you don't really have to worry. He's restricted. Um, For Connor McGovern and Jason Peters, Jason Peters, he's going to be 41. He'll be done. This is his final year. For Connor McGovern, it gets really interesting because of the future of this team, right? If... You know, the Cowboys decide to roll with Tyron Smith moving forward. Tyron's healthy. You know, he feels like he can go a couple more years. Kind of makes Connor McGovern expendable because, really, you think about, you know, Tyler Smith and his flexibility to play guard and tackle. If you believe that this is Tyron's last year, of course you're going to try and sign Connor McGovern on a cheap deal. I think that's kind of a thing where, you know, you would like to have him back if it's a nice cheap deal, but... Let him go somewhere else, get the comp pick. That's kind of what I think the Cowboys are going to do here. Let's actually do special teams really quickly, just because I think, you you know, you only got three guys. The long snappers, vet minimums, bring them back. I don't have a problem. Jake McQuaid's doing his job. Matt Overton, I don't have to call your name a whole bunch of times. You're doing your job. Brett Maher is going to be the key thing. Right now, his projected market value is at $3.6 million, and that's just because of how well he's been playing and the value of how kickers are. Kind of similar to how uh, Brian Anger was last year for the Cowboys. I think that you should try to bring back Brett Maher. You kind of find that he's a bit better at this point in time. You know, maybe he's, you know, one of those guys where you can just give him a one-year or two-year deal and just go from there. So there's that. Next, we move over to your nine defensive free agents. To start things off, Donovan Wilson, I think that he's played his way out of Dallas, and not in a bad way. I mean, the guy's been playing very well. I would say that, you know, you already have guys like in Malik Hooker and uh, J. Ron Curse, where you can just draft another guy and move forward. You have Israel Mukwamu. I think that that's going to also kind of push the Cowboys more so to let Donovan Wilson go. I think that the role that he is in Dallas is perfect. As for a full-time starter, we've seen him a couple times, and it wasn't really the prettiest in coverage. So there's that. For your linebackers, you got Anthony Barr, Leighton Van Der Esch, and Luke Gifford. I'm more so in the realm of things that Leighton Van Der Esch is the only guy that really has proved himself to be worthy of getting another contract in here. But... I just don't see it how he's going to be here for a long time. I think that he might get an Anthony Brown or Jordan Lewis type of extension, like a three-year, uh, three to five million dollars a year, and he's just you know a solid starter rotational piece. And I think that that's fine because you know that's the kind of value I have in Leighton at this juncture at his career. And he hasn't been playing horrific this year. He's had his moments, but he's played solid enough to possibly earn a second contract with Dallas. Legitimate second contract. Uh, as for the other two, Anthony Morris cooked. I don't see him coming back. And as for Luke Gifford, special teams player, he's been okay, but you can maybe do better and get someone younger and cheaper. Next, you have your cornerbacks. You have um, Anthony Brown and C.J. Goodwin. Now, C.J. Goodwin's most likely going to come back on a vet minimum because he's a special teams player, your captain right there. But for Anthony Brown, this is where things get a bit interesting because with Anthony Brown, you tear your Achilles this late into the season, odds are he might be out for 2023, depending on the severity of the Achilles tear. And so if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, you're monitoring that situation because if you want to, you could sign him on a very cheap two-year, three-year deal that's around two to four million dollars a year, but you're kind of punting that one year because I don't think Brown's going to be ready. I th- I would say keep an eye out on Kelvin Joseph, Nashawn Wright, Deron Bland, because those guys might play Anthony Brown out of Dallas. <clears throat> you know, it really does suck because I think that if he did not get hurt, you, we would he, you know, having a discussion, has Anthony Brown earned a second contract? I would have been like, eh, maybe. Not like <laughs> it was more than five mil. But 
that's a guy that, you know, if you want to bring him back, bring him back on the cheap. Uh, for the other one, uh, you got Dante Fowler, Carlos Watkins, Jonathan Hankins, your defensive lineman. <clears throat> Hankins coming over from the trade from the Raiders. I think that you could get him on a nice cheap contract there. He's played solid for what you've asked him to. Dante Fowler, right now the market value for him and what he's been doing is around $7 million. I don't see the Cowboys paying that for a guy like Dante Fowler. Would I like to have him back? Yeah, you know, as a rotation piece, but if he's going to get more money elsewhere, I'm cool with that. And then uh, Carlos Watkins, I think that realistically it's going to be between Hankins and Watkins, I say that you go with Hankins because he's been the better player of the two. But again, you have the draft there for you and some free agency guys, which we'll talk about once we actually see who's available. And then finally, your extension eligible guys. Those are CeeDee Lamb and Trevon Diggs. Those two guys, you're looking 21.4 mil for Lamb and Trevon Diggs, 22 million. Now, for those that don't understand how extensions will operate... That doesn't mean that you pay him this much and you're going to immediately give him that money. What would happen is, is that with Trevon Diggs, he will be going into the final year of his contract next year. You would most likely want to get him a deal as soon as possible. For Lamb, he still has two more years, including the fifth year option. So, well, you know, one year plus the one year option. So you have a little bit more time with that. If I was playing the game is how I would do it. The first thing I'm doing is I'm picking up that fifth year option and then I'm throwing him an extension now and with Trevon Diggs I'm extending him as quickly as I can because the market is going to continue to go up and up and up and that's just unfortunately where we're at with it guys I understand that some of you might be saying oh that's a lot of money but that's just where the Cowboys are at and I think that you know they'll get something here they will pay their own but if they, they can't be dragging their feet. They, they cannot drag their feet because we've seen the Cowboys do that where they drag their feet to try to get a deal where that suits the front office and the team better. And to be honest with you, there's no incentive to do that because all you're going to do is pay more money in the long run. That happened with DeMarcus Lawrence. That's happened with Dak Prescott. That's happened with Ezekiel Elliott. It doesn't matter. Like I don't care if you like the player or not. If you believe that you want to keep this guy here long term, one of these guys, whoever, you have to pay up front immediately. So there is that. And then again, you do have the $8.6 million in cap space. I would just keep this in mind that that number can be easily manipulated. I know a lot of people, and this is why I wanted to keep this up there, because some people will look at this and they'll be like, Space, why the hell would you, you know, how can we do any of this with just that? And so, you know, if I am being completely real with you guys, the point of this is that the cap is easily manipulated, and so I believe the Cowboys should take advantage of the situation they're in, go and sign as many of their own as possible, and I'm okay with a minimal offseason, but again, the problem that I have is that the Dallas Cowboys don't like to pay their own, or they begrudgingly pay their own, and they got to change that. So I think that this is where we've talked about Odell, you know, for your wide receivers, right? If you're not going to sign any of these two guys, do you decide to throw the money from Schultz at o, you know at Odell? I, I don't know. I really don't. And so, again, I would say out of these guys, I'm looking at bringing Noah Brown back on a cheap deal. Definitely looking at bringing Tony Pollard back. I want to be shocked if the Cowboys franchise tagged him. I want to bring back Cooper Rush. Terrence Steele, Brett Maher, one, you know, one of the uh, long snappers, doesn't matter. Leighton Van Der Esch, and Jonathan Hankins. There really isn't a massive list here. Like I said, realistically, the Cowboys only have a handful of guys they got to pay on here. And then you got these big contracts upcoming that the Cowboys will have to pay heft, you know, hefty prices for. But that's the nature of the business. And I guess this is why the Cowboys build the teams the way they do because they have to pay their own. But again, if they are going to be begrudging and not wanting to pay, they will get bit in the ass. Now, with that being said, guys, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and hit the notification bell. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Have a good one.